A beam of plasma sliced through the air, melting a massive hole in the colony's steel wall like it was butter. Lieutenant Jesse Foster looked on in shock as a horde of Vidayan invaders poured through the breach, their weapons blazing. His standard-issue human combat armor barely deflected the plasma rounds as he and his squad dove for cover behind the smoldering ruins. The remote human colony of Arcadia was under attack. Without warning, a Vidian warship had descended from orbit and unleashed a devastating barrage, instantly vaporizing the outer defenses. Alarms blared as Jesse led his soldiers in a desperate firefight against the first wave of invaders. Draco, a battle-hardened Vidayan shock trooper, spearheaded the assault with merciless determination, his eyes cold behind his transparent helmet. Outgunned and outnumbered, Jesse had no choice. Fall back to the inner bunker, he yelled over the chaos. As the human soldiers retreated, a sleek shuttle emblazoned with the Hyperion Defense Solutions logo streaked overhead, touching down amidst the rubble. Captain Alara Voss emerged with her operatives, clad in obsidian black armor of an unfamiliar design. They engaged the Vidians with calm precision, and Jesse watched in astonishment as the aliens' plasma rounds dissipated harmlessly against the Hyperion armor. Emboldened, Jesse rallied his troops for a fierce counterattack alongside the Hyperion operatives. The Vidians faltered, their weapons proving utterly ineffective. Draco barked frantic orders, but it was hopeless. The humans' new armor absorbed everything the aliens could throw at it. Jesse and Alara fought side by side, an unstoppable force, decimating the Vidian troops. The rout was swift and decisive. As the smoke cleared, Jesse confronted Alara, demanding answers. She just smiled cryptically. All in good time, Lieutenant. This is only the beginning. The battle for Arcadia was over, but a new arms race had just begun, and the balance of power in the galaxy would soon shift forever. News of the miraculous human armor spread like wildfire across the galactic network, reaching even the most distant worlds. On the Vidian homeworld of Naruket, the High Council convened an emergency session in the cavernous Hall of Deliberation. General Zarn, an imposing figure clad in ceremonial battle armor, pushed to the front of the gathered counselors. This human armor represents an existential threat to the supremacy of the Vidian Imperium, Zarn declared his gravelly voice echoing off the stone walls. We must launch an immediate all-out assault on their space before they can mass-produce this technology. Murmurs of assent rippled through the council chamber, but Councillor Talia, a shrewd politician with calculating eyes, stood to challenge Zarn. And risk open war with the humans, she countered. We'd be playing directly into their hands. No, we need a more subtle approach, a covert operation to steal the armor schematics from under their noses. A heated debate erupted, with counselors taking sides. But in the end, Talia's plan won out. The council authorized her to recruit a team of elite operatives for the mission, and she knew just the spymaster for the job, Cardin, a legend in the shadowy world of Vidayan intelligence. Light years away in the glittering megacities of Earth, Dr. Elena Novak found herself thrust into the global spotlight. Her groundbreaking armor had saved countless lives on Arcadia, and now the world hailed her as a hero. But behind the accolades and media appearances, a quiet unease gnawed at Elena. Late one night in her private lab, she stared at the shimmering armor schematics floating in the hollow display, lost in thought. What have I unleashed? she whispered to herself. The armor was meant to protect, but in the wrong hands, it could just as easily be used to dominate, to oppress. Elena knew that the delicate balance of power in the galaxy had been irrevocably altered, and she couldn't shake the feeling that an even greater conflict loomed on the horizon. Unbeknownst to Elena, that conflict was already in motion. Cardin and his hand-picked team of Vidian operatives sliced through the void in a stealth ship, rapidly closing in on Earth. Disguised as a diplomatic delegation, they planned to infiltrate Hyperion Defense Solutions and steal the armor schematics right out from under the humans' noses. On the recently liberated colony of Arcadia, Captain Jesse Foster stood before his newly armored soldiers, the weight of command heavy on his shoulders. As he put them through their paces in the training yard, his mind raced with the implications of their new abilities. The Vidians won't give up so easily, he confided to his second-in-command, Lieutenant Kai Tanaka. They'll throw everything they have at us to get their hands on this armor tech. 
Kai nodded grimly. We'll be ready for them, sir. This armor is a game changer. But even as he said the words, Jesse couldn't shake the feeling that the game was already in motion, the pieces falling into place on a galactic chessboard beyond his control. Back on Earth, Marcus Blackwell, the hard-nosed CEO of Hyperion, narrowly escaped an assassination attempt by a Vidian operative, confirming Jesse's worst fears. In response, Blackwell ordered an immediate lockdown of all Hyperion facilities. The armor research would be moved off-world to a heavily guarded secret base. But what Marcus didn't know was that Carden had already inserted a mole into Hyperion, a sleeper agent biding their time for the perfect moment to strike. And as Elena and her team raced against the clock to perfect the armor technology, the noose was tightening around them with every passing moment. Galactic tensions simmered as news of the assassination attempt spread. Earth's government demanded access to the armor schematics, eager to secure any advantage in the brewing conflict. But Elena resisted, knowing the dangerous potential in the wrong hands. As Cardin's team closed in, Jesse and his soldiers prepared for the inevitable Vidayan counterattack, and Elena fought to keep the genie in the bottle. The hope of the universe hung in a precarious balance. The opening shots had been fired in a shadow war that would determine the course of history, and the race for the ultimate weapon was about to reach a boiling point. The silence in the Hyperion off-world research facility shattered as alarms blared through the corridors. Dr. Elena Novak's heart raced as she sprinted towards the main lab, her footsteps echoing on the polished floor. She burst through the doors, eyes widening at the scene before her. Shattered glass crunched under her feet. Workstations lay in ruins, smoking and sparking. And there, in the center of the destruction, stood a figure in sleek obsidian armor, a perfect replica of their prototype. No, Elena whispered, her blood running cold. The figure turned, visor retracting, to reveal a face that made Elena's stomach lurch. Ethan Reed, her trusted assistant, smiled coldly. Thank you for your hospitality, doctor, he said, his voice tinged with a faint Vidian accent. I'm afraid I must cut our collaboration short. Before Elena could react, Ethan activated a device on his wrist. A shimmering portal opened behind him, and he stepped through, vanishing with the prototype and a data core containing their research. The portal winked out of existence just as Captain Jesse Foster burst into the lab, plasma rifle at the ready. His eyes locked with Elena's, and he saw the horror etched on her face. They got it, didn't they? he asked, already knowing the answer. Elena nodded numbly, surveying the devastation. Everything, the prototype, the schematics, Ethan was working for them all along. Jesse's lips pursed. He keyed his comm unit. This is Foster. Lock down the entire facility. We have an alpha-level breach. But it was too late. The Vidians were gone, along with humanity's greatest weapon. Hush. On the Vidian homeworld of Naru Ket, General Zarn stood before a gathering of his top military advisors. The stolen human armor prototype gleamed on a pedestal beside him, a trophy of their successful infiltration. Gentlemen, Zarn's gravelly voice filled the war room, the balance of power has shifted. With this technology, we will crush the human resistance and establish Vidian dominance across the galaxy. He gestured to a slender, sharp-featured woman standing nearby. Dr. Zarya Vex, our foremost weapons researcher, will lead the efforts to unlock the armor's secrets. Doctor, how long until we can replicate it? Zarya's eyes gleamed with scientific fervor. Initial analysis is promising, General. The energy absorption properties are unlike anything we've seen before. Give me three months and I'll have a working prototype. Six and we can begin mass production. Zarn nodded approvingly. Excellent. I want our invasion fleet ready to launch the moment we have operational armor. The humans won't know what hit them. As the meeting adjourned, Counselor Talia lingered, her face etched with concern. General, she said quietly, perhaps we should consider a more diplomatic approach. This technology could lead to mutually assured destruction if we're not careful. Zarn's eyes narrowed. Your concerns are noted, Counselor. But the time for diplomacy is over. We will strike while the humans are vulnerable, and we will be victorious. Talia watched him leave, her mind racing. She had to act fast if there was any hope of averting catastrophe. 
Yes. Back on Earth, Elena Novak sat in her darkened office, head in her hands. The weight of her failure pressed down on her like a physical force. How could she have been so blind, so trusting? A gentle knock at the door roused her from her spiral of self-recrimination. Captain Foster entered, his face grim but determined. Doctor, he said, I know you're considering shutting down the project, but we can't give up now. Elena looked up, her eyes red-rimmed. Jesse, don't you see? I've doomed us all. The Vidians have our tech, and we're back to square one. Jesse shook his head firmly. No, we're not. We still have you. The brilliant mind behind it all. And now we know what we're up against. He leaned forward, his voice intense. This is humanity's best shot at survival. We need to push harder, work faster. We can still beat them at their own game. Elena stared at him for a long moment, then slowly nodded. You're right. We can't give up. She stood, a spark of tenacity igniting in her eyes. Let's get to work. As they left the office, neither of them noticed the tiny camera hidden in the corner, silently transmitting their conversation to a receiver far beyond Earth's borders. Ah! Uh, in a nondescript hotel room on a neutral world, Counselor Talia sat across from Ambassador Lena Sarmiento, their voices low and urgent. We don't have much time, Talia said. Zarn is preparing for all-out war. If we don't act now, both our species could be annihilated. Lena nodded gravely. My government is equally concerned. But how can we possibly bring both sides to the table with tensions this high? Talia leaned forward, her eyes intense. We need to arrange a summit. Top-level talks between your leaders and our high council. It's a long shot, but it might be our only chance to avoid catastrophe. As the two women began to formulate their desperate plan for peace, the galaxy teetered on the brink of a war that threatened to consume everything in its path. The Vidian Research Facility hummed with activity as Dr. Zarya Vex hunched over a holographic display, her eyes gleaming with triumph. The stolen human armor prototype rotated slowly in the air before her, key components highlighted in pulsing red. General Zarn, she called out, her voice sharp with excitement. I believe we've found it. The imposing Vidian commander strode into the lab, his battle-scarred face set in its usual scowl. Found what, doctor? Zarya manipulated the hologram, zooming in on a complex latticework of energy conduits. The armor's weakness, its energy absorption matrix can be overwhelmed by concentrated bursts of high-frequency plasma fire. Zarn's eyes narrowed. You're certain? Absolutely, Zarya replied, pulling up a simulation. Watch. The holographic armor shimmered as a virtual plasma burst struck it. For a moment it held, then collapsed in a spectacular light show of overloaded circuits. A predatory smile spread across Zarn's face. Excellent work, Doctor. Begin mass-producing plasma weapons calibrated to exploit this weakness immediately. He turned to his waiting subordinates. Accelerate invasion preparations. We strike before the humans can correct this flaw. As alarms blared throughout the facility, signaling the transition to a war footing, Zarn allowed himself a moment of savage satisfaction. Soon the galaxy would kneel before the Vidian Imperium. Uts? On Earth, Klaxon shrieked as Dr. Elena Novak sprinted through Hyperion's main testing facility. She skidded to a halt before a towering figure encased in sleek, dark armor. How's it holding up, Jesse? She called out, eyes fixed on scrolling data readouts. Inside the suit, Captain Foster grinned as he effortlessly hefted a massive robotic arm. Like a dream, Doc, this new absorption matrix is something else. Elena nodded, tension easing from her shoulders. Good. Let's see how it handles the plasma cannon test. Jesse strode to the center of the reinforced chamber. A massive gun turret lowered from the ceiling, its barrel glowing an ominous blue. Hit me, he said. The cannon roared to life, unleashing a torrent of superheated plasma. Jesse braced himself, but the incoming fire simply rippled across his armor, dissipating harmlessly. After thirty seconds of sustained fire, the cannon fell silent. Elena whooped, pumping her fist in the air. Yes, absorption matrix holding steady at 97% efficiency. We did it. Jesse's helmet retracted, 
revealing his sweat-streaked but grinning face. Damn fine work, Doc. With this upgrade, we might just have a chance against whatever the Vidians throw at us. Us! Light years away, on a neutral world far from prying eyes, Ambassador Lena Sarmiento paced nervously in an opulent conference room. The air was thick with tension as delegates from both human and Vidian factions filed in, eyeing each other warily. As the last of the diplomats took their seats, Lena stepped forward. Esteemed representatives, she began, her voice steady despite her racing heart, we stand at a crossroads. The choices we make here today will determine the fate of our civilizations. Her words were cut short by a piercing alarm. A holographic display flickered to life, showing a massive Vidian fleet emerging from hyperspace near Earth's outer colonies. Chaos erupted in the conference room. Accusations flew as delegates shouted over each other. In the confusion, no one noticed Counselor Talia slip away, her face grim with purpose. She found Cardin waiting in a shadowy alcove. It's worse than we feared, she said, her voice low. Zarn's made his move. We have to stop him, or there won't be a galaxy left to fight over. Cardin nodded, his eyes cold. My team's ready. We'll expose Zarn's treachery, or die trying. As alarms blared across human space, heralding the onset of full-scale war, the fate of two civilizations hung in the balance. The Vidian invasion had begun. The Vidian invasion fleet loomed over Earth's outer colonies, a metallic swarm blotting out the stars. On the bridge of his flagship, General Zarn's eyes gleamed with anticipation as he surveyed the tactical display. Prepare to fire the plasma warhead, he ordered, his voice cold and triumphant. But deep within the massive vessel, Captain Jesse Foster and his strike team moved with deadly precision. Their armor, sleek and dark, absorbed the dim emergency lighting as they neutralized Vidian guards with practiced efficiency. Foster's calm crackled. Bridge security is heavier than expected, Captain, Lieutenant Chen reported, her voice tense. We're encountering resistance. Understood, Foster replied, gesturing his team forward. Push through. We're running out of time. They rounded a corner and found themselves face to face with a squad of Vidian elites. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air, impacting Foster's armor in a dazzling light show of absorbed energy. He returned fire, his weapons spitting blue-white death. As the last Vidian fell, Foster's team surged toward the bridge. The reinforced doors loomed before them, a final obstacle. Breach charges, Foster ordered, on my mark. The explosion rocked the ship and Foster's team poured onto the bridge through the smoking wreckage. General Zarn stood at the command console, his hand hovering over a large red button. It's over, Zarn, Foster called out, his weapon trained on the Vidian commander. Zarn's lips curled into a sneer. You're too late, human. One press and your world burns. A blur of motion caught Foster's eye. Draco, the infamous Vidian shock trooper, emerged from a side passage. In his hands, he carried a massive alien weapon that pulsed with malevolent energy. The plasma disruptor, Foster breathed, recognizing the experimental cannon designed to overload their armor's absorption matrix. Draco fired, and the world exploded into searing light. Foster felt his armor shudder and crack, systems blaring warnings in his ears. Around him, his team stumbled and fell, their suits rupturing under the onslaught. Just as despair threatened to overwhelm him, Foster's HUD flashed with an incoming transmission. Dr. Elena Novak's voice, tense but determined, filled his helmet. Jesse, I'm uploading an emergency patch. It should reinforce the absorption matrices. Hold on! Foster gritted his teeth as his armor recalibrated, the burning sensation fading. He saw Draco's weapon begin to smoke and sputter, overheating from the sustained fire. A new combatant entered the fray. Cardin, Counselor Talia's enigmatic operative, engaged Draco in close quarters combat. The two were a blur of lethal precision, buying Foster's team precious seconds to recover. Now, Foster roared, launching himself at General Zarn. The Vidian commander snarled, his fingers stretching for the detonation button. Foster's armored fist connected with Zarn's jaw, sending him sprawling. They grappled on the deck, Foster straining to keep Zarn from reaching the console. 
With a final desperate surge, Foster pinned Zarn to the ground. Chen, the warhead! Lieutenant Chen, her armor scorched but functional, raced to the command console. Her fingers flew over the alien controls, entering the access codes they'd fought so hard to obtain. Warhead disarmed, Captain, she reported, relief evident in her voice. As Counselor Talia's loyalist forces flooded the bridge to take Zarn into custody, Foster allowed himself a moment to breathe. The immediate threat was neutralized, but he knew the real work was just beginning. Days later, Foster found himself seated beside Dr. Novak in a sterile conference room, facing a delegation of Vidian counselors across a polished table. The air was thick with tension as debates raged over disarmament protocols and technology-sharing agreements. We cannot simply hand over our research, Novak argued, her voice firm, but we're willing to collaborate on strictly defensive applications under joint supervision. As the negotiations dragged on, Foster's mind drifted to the challenges that lay ahead. He knew that peace, like the armor they'd created, was both powerful and fragile. It would take all their skill and persistence to maintain the delicate balance they'd fought so hard to achieve. Five years passed, and the fragile peace held. Captain Jesse Foster stood on the observation deck of the orbital station Hyperion 1, watching as human and Vidian ships docked side by side. The sight still felt surreal. Admiring the view, Captain? Dr. Elena Novak's voice startled him from his reverie. Foster turned, a wry smile on his face. Just thinking about how far we've come. Elena nodded, her eyes reflecting the same mix of pride and caution. The armor-sharing program has been more successful than I dared hope. But... But there's always a but, Foster finished. Before Elena could respond, alarms blared throughout the station. Foster's comm unit crackled to life. Captain, we've got multiple distress calls from the outer mining colonies. Lieutenant Chen's voice was tight with urgency. They're under attack. Foster and Elena exchanged a look of dogged persistence. On my way, Foster barked, already striding towards the command center. The scene that greeted them was chaos. Holographic displays showed Vidian ships swarming human outposts. But these weren't the moderate Vidians they'd come to work with. These were Draco's hardliners, somehow armed with their own version of the advanced armor. How is this possible? Elena muttered, her fingers flying over a console as she analyzed the incoming data. Foster didn't have time to ponder. Chen, prep the fleet for immediate departure. We need to evacuate those colonies now. As the human defense force scrambled, the true horror of the situation became clear. The Vidayan weapons were tearing through the colonists' armor like it was tissue paper. Helmet cams showed soldiers disintegrating in bursts of blinding plasma. They've weaponized the Matrix instability, Elena gasped, her face pale. Prolonged plasma exposure. It's degrading the absorption field exponentially faster than it should. Foster gritted his teeth, watching helplessly as another outpost went dark. We need a solution, Doc. Fast. Elena's lab became a hive of frenzied activity. Simulations ran day and night as she and her team worked to patch the armor's vulnerability. But with each breakthrough came a new setback. A week into the crisis, Foster received a priority transmission from Elena. Her face was haggard, her eyes wild. Jesse, someone's sabotaging our work. Jamie's is missing and half our data is corrupted. Before Foster could respond, an explosion rocked the station. Security footage showed masked assailants storming Elena's lab. Get to safety, Foster shouted. I'm on my way. He arrived to find the lab in ruins, Elena gone. A message flashed on a cracked screen. Hyperion sends its regards. Foster's blood ran cold. Marcus Blackwell, Hyperion's ruthless CEO, had made his move. With humanity's defenses crumbling and corporate treachery from within, Foster knew he needed help from unexpected quarters. He opened a secure channel to a familiar face. Counselor Talia, he said, his voice grim. We need to talk. As Foster coordinated with their old Vidayan allies, Draco's fleet pressed deeper into human space. The rogue commander's laughter echoed across every frequency as his solar forge cannons reduced entire stations to drifting debris. The war they'd fought so hard to prevent had returned with a vengeance, 
and this time, humanity's greatest defense had become its greatest weakness. Vulnerability. The fragile peace they'd fought for was unraveling before their eyes. Foster's team struck swiftly, infiltrating the remote moon facility where Dr. Evelyn Harris conducted her illicit research. They moved through shadowy corridors, neutralizing Hyperion security with practiced efficiency. As they breached the main lab, Foster's stomach twisted. Rows of armor suits lined the walls, but something was off. The telltale shimmer of active absorption matrices was absent. Shit, Chen breathed, examining a nearby console. They've disabled the matrices entirely. Before Foster could respond, alarms blared. Hyperion troops flooded the chamber, led by a familiar face, Admiral Graves. Stand down, Foster, Graves barked, his weapon trained on the captain. You're interfering in classified military operations. Foster's mind raced, piecing together the implications. You're working with Blackwell, he said, disgust evident in his voice. Selling out humanity for what? Profit? Graves' lips curled into a sneer. For control, Captain, the armor was making us soft. With these, he gestured to the modified suits, we dictate the terms of engagement. A firefight erupted. Foster's team, outnumbered and caught off guard, fought desperately. Chen went down, a plasma bolt searing through her leg. Foster felt the sickening lurch of failure as Graves' men overwhelmed them. As darkness closed in, Foster's last thought was of Elena. He prayed she could unravel this conspiracy before it was too late. Miles away, in a hidden Vidian outpost, Dr. Elena Novak worked feverishly alongside Dr. Taros. The Vidian scientist's defection had been a godsend, providing crucial intelligence on the hardliner's plans. Another failed simulation, Elena muttered fatigue evident in her voice. We're missing something. Taro studied the holographic display, her alien features creased in concentration. Perhaps if we... An urgent transmission cut her off. Carden's face materialized, his expression grim. We've lost contact with Foster's team. And there's more. We've intercepted chatter about an impending attack on the unity ceremony. Elena's blood ran cold. We're out of time she said, her fingers flying over the console. Cardin, can you delay the ceremony? Negative, the operative replied. But Counselor Talia is en route to evacuate key personnel. Elena nodded, steeling herself. Then we go with what we have. Uploading the patch now. As the antimatter bomb tore through the celebration, shattering years of hard-won trust, Elena's patch raced through the galactic communication network. Across human and Vidian space, Armor suits flickered as their absorption matrices reactivated. But it wasn't enough. Reports flooded in of coordinated attacks by Vidian hardliners and human extremists. The galaxy erupted into chaos once more. In the aftermath, Elena stood before a battered holographic display, surrounded by the remnants of both species' moderate factions. Foster's absence was a physical ache. We've confirmed Blackwell's involvement, Counselor Talia said, her voice weary but Graves has gone to ground and Harris is in the wind. Elena's expression resolute. Then we find them, she said, grit evident in every line of her body. We expose their treachery, we rescue Foster, and we put an end to this madness. As the assembled leaders nodded their agreement, alarms blared once more. A massive fleet of unidentified ships had just emerged from hyperspace, their intentions unknown. The next phase of the war had begun. The unidentified fleet materialized into a swarm of sleek, predatory vessels. Their hulls gleamed with an oily sheen, adorned with the unmistakable Hyperion logo. At their head, a massive dreadnought bristled with weaponry that made Elena's blood run cold. It's Blackwell, she breathed, recognizing the corporate tyrant's personal flagship. Before anyone could react, the comms erupted with a barrage of urgent distress calls. Unified outposts across multiple sectors reported simultaneous attacks. The Defender's armor, their greatest asset, had become their downfall. Elena watched in horror as tactical displays showed entire squadrons disintegrating under concentrated fire. How is this possible? She muttered, fingers flying across her console. The matrices should be holding. 
A grim-faced counselor, Talia, stepped forward. Dr. Harris's work, she said, her voice tight. She found a way to exploit the very foundation of your design. As they scrambled to coordinate a response, reports flooded in of a new threat, an elite mercenary force dubbed the Talons. These black-armored juggernauts tore through allied defenses with terrifying efficiency. Amidst the chaos, Eleanor received a fragmented transmission from Foster. His face was smeared with grime and blood, the feed cutting in and out. Vidayan Prime. Overrun, he gasped, rallying survivors. Need reinforcements. The feed cut out entirely, leaving Elena staring at static. She clenched her fists, pushing down the surge of fear and helplessness. We need a plan, she said, turning to the assembled leaders. And we need it now. Days blurred into weeks as Foster led hit-and-run strikes against Blackwell's forces. Each small victory came at a crushing cost, but slowly they began to push back. In a makeshift lab on a nameless asteroid, Foster watched Dr. Taros manipulate a holographic armor schematic. The Vidian scientist's movements were precise, despite her obvious exhaustion. There, Taros said, highlighting a section of the projection, a carefully calibrated electromagnetic pulse should overload the compromised matrices. Foster nodded grimly. It's a start, but we'll need to get close to make it work. As they refined their strategy, Elena toiled in her own hidden sanctuary. Surrounded by banks of humming computers, she worked tirelessly to undo the damage Harris had wrought. A priority alert drew her attention. Carden's face appeared on her screen, his expression grim. We have the codes, he said without preamble. But Blackwell's forces are in pursuit. We may not. The feed exploded into static. Elena's heart raced as she initiated emergency protocols to secure the incoming data transmission. Across the stars, Foster led a desperate assault against the Talon stronghold. The electromagnetic pulse weapons proved devastatingly effective, but the mercenaries' superior numbers threatened to overwhelm them. As Foster ducked behind cover, his armor smoking from a near miss, his calm crackled to life. Elena's voice, strained but determined, filled his helmet. Jesse, we've got Harris's codes, but Carden... She paused, grief evident in her voice. He didn't make it. Foster allowed himself a moment of silent mourning for their fallen comrade. His sacrifice won't be in vain, he said, his voice steel. What's our next move? Before Elena could respond, a new threat emerged. Foster watched in horror as Talon soldiers seemed to phase through solid walls, their armor flickering with an otherworldly energy. Vorian Tech, Elena breathed, her voice filled with dread. Graves must have... Her words were cut off as one of the phase-shifting soldiers materialized beside Foster. Energy blade humming to life. Foster barely managed to dodge, feeling the searing heat as the blade missed him by millimeters. As he grappled with the ghostly assailant, Foster knew their struggle had entered a new, terrifying phase. The war for humanity's future had never seemed more uncertain. The phase-shifting Talon materialized, his energy blade slicing through the air where Foster's head had been a split second earlier. Foster rolled, his armor scraping against the debris-strewn floor. He fired his sidearm, but the rounds passed harmlessly through the flickering form of his attacker. Elena, we've got a serious problem. Foster grunted, dodging another lethal swipe. These bastards are walking through walls now. Vorian Tech, Elena's voice crackled through his comms. Graves must have integrated it with Harris's sabotaged matrices. Foster's team was being overwhelmed. Chen lay motionless, her armor smoking from a direct hit. Kira fought back to back with a Vidian soldier, their weapons barely slowing the advancing Wraith troops. We need an exit strategy now, Foster barked, desperation edging into his voice. The lab around them erupted in chaos as more Wraith soldiers phased through the walls. Foster's mind raced, searching for a solution that didn't exist. They were outgunned, outmaneuvered, and rapidly running out of options. Across the stars, Dr. Elena Novak stood before a holographic display, her face etched with lines of exhaustion and worry. The tactical readouts were grim. Graves' wraith forces were cutting through their defenses like they weren't even there. We're out of time, she muttered, her fingers flying over the console. Counselor Talia, 
I need to speak with Draco. Talia's hologram flickered, her expression skeptical. The hardliner commander? Elena, he's... Our only chance, Elena finished. We need numbers, and we need them now. As Talia reluctantly made the arrangements, Elena turned her attention back to the Psi Matrix schematics. The upgrades were nearly complete, but implementing them across their remaining forces would leave them vulnerable. It's a risk we have to take, she said to herself, initiating the final compilation sequence. The lab doors hissed open, and Dr. Taros entered, her alien features set in steadfast perseverance. The first batch of upgrades is ready, she reported, but without a full reboot? I know, Elena cut her off. We'll have to time this perfectly. A new hologram flickered to life. Draco, his face a mask of terrifying rage. Speak quickly, human, he snarled. Why should I listen to anything you have to say? Elena took a deep breath. Because, Commander, we both want the same thing. To stop Graves and his wraith abominations. She laid out her plan, watching Draco's expression shift from contempt to grudging interest. As she finished, the Vidian hardliner was silent for a long moment. You realize, he said finally, that this alliance will last only as long as it takes to crush graves? Elena nodded. That's all I'm asking for. Back on the battlefield, Foster's team had been pushed into a corner. The lab's defenses were crumbling, and the Wraith soldiers seemed to grow bolder with each passing moment. Suddenly, Foster's comms crackled to life. Jesse, hold on, Elena's voice cut through the chaos. Reinforcements are incoming. When I give the word, you need to initiate a full armor reboot. Are you insane? Foster shouted, ducking under another energy blade. We'll be sitting ducks. Trust me, Elena pleaded. It's our only shot. The lab's remaining wall exploded inward, and Foster's heart sank as he saw the distinctive black armor of Talon operatives pouring through the breach. This was it. They were done for. But then, impossibly, a barrage of plasma fire erupted from behind the talons. Foster watched in disbelief as Draco himself led a charge of Vidian hardliners, their weapons tearing into the surprised wraith forces. Now, Foster, Elena's voice rang out, initiate the reboot. Foster hesitated for a split second, then made the call. All units, full armor shut down and reboot. Authorization code Foster Alpha 97. As one, the armored suits of both humans and Vidians went dark. Foster felt a moment of vertigo as his HUD flickered out, leaving him blind and defenseless. The sounds of battle raged around him, punctuated by the screams of the dying. An eternity seemed to pass. Then, with a hum of energy, Foster's armor came back online. The Psi Matrix upgrade flooded his systems and he felt a surge of renewed strength. He looked up to see a wraith soldier attempting to phase through a nearby wall. The trooper's armor flickered and sparked, then solidified. Foster didn't hesitate. He charged, tackling the now vulnerable enemy to the ground. All around him, the tide of battle was turning. The upgraded armor rendered the wraith technology useless, and Graves' forces found themselves suddenly outmatched. Foster allowed himself a moment of hope. But as he surveyed the carnage around him, he knew the war was far from finished. The fragile alliance with Draco's hardliners could shatter at any moment, and somewhere out there, Blackwell and Harris were still at large. He opened a channel to Elena. We've got them on the run, he reported, but we need to press our advantage. What's our next move? Before she could respond, a priority alert flashed across his HUD. Talon strike teams had been detected en route to Elena's position. Foster's blood ran cold as he realized their true objective. They're coming for you, he said, already moving towards the nearest transport. Hold on, Elena, I'm on my way. Foster's desperate race to reach Elena ended in chaos. The Talon strike teams had already breached her sanctuary, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. As he surveyed the smoking ruins, his heart sank. Elena, he called, his voice hoarse. Dr. Novak! A weak cough drew his attention. He found her pinned beneath a fallen support beam, her face pale and drawn. Jesse, she whispered as he knelt beside her. The data... You have to... Her words were cut short by a fit of coughing. Foster gently lifted the beam, wincing at the damage to her body. 
As he carried her to safety, alarms blared throughout the facility. We've got incoming, one of his squad members reported. Looks like Viddy and ships, but something's off. Foster's calm crackled to life, Draco's gruff voice filling his helmet. Human, your allies have turned on us. They're attacking our outposts across three sectors. That's impossible, Foster began, but the feed cut out abruptly. In the days that followed, their fragile alliance crumbled. Foster watched helplessly as moderates on both sides were silenced, their pleas for unity drowned out by calls for vengeance. Admiral Rhodes, a hardline human commander, seized control of their remaining forces. From this moment forward, Rhodes announced, his face a mask of cold fury, we are at war with the corporate separatists. All armored technology is to be confiscated. Anyone found aiding Blackwell or Harris will be treated as an enemy combatant. Foster's team was forcibly integrated into a new Black Ops division. Their missions grew increasingly brutal, targeting not just confirmed enemies, but anyone suspected of corporate sympathies. After weeks of fruitless operations, a breakthrough came. Foster decrypted a fragment of data suggesting Blackwell and Harris had established a weapons facility in the Roe Marius cluster. More troubling still, they were preparing to unveil a new armor system codenamed Goliath to potential alien buyers. We can't let this happen, Foster told his assembled team, a mix of human and Vidayan operatives he'd handpicked for this unsanctioned mission. If that tech gets out, this war will never end. Elena, still recovering from her injuries, insisted on joining them. My work started this, she said, her voice firm despite her pale complexion. I have to see it through. Their infiltration of Blackwell's orbital lab went smoothly at first, but as they breached the main research bay, Foster froze in shock. Towering mechs lined the walls, their massive frames filled with weaponry. My God, Elena breathed. They've perverted the entire concept. These aren't defensive matrices. They're walking arsenals. Before Foster could respond, alarms blared. The chamber erupted into chaos as Blackwell's alien mercenaries poured in from one side, while Harris's automated defenses activated on the other. Elena, get those firewalls down, Foster shouted, diving for cover as energy blasts scorched the air around him. Everyone else, sink matrices and push forward. The battle raged, Foster's team slowly gaining ground through sheer dedication and Elena's frantic hacking. Just as victory seemed within reach, the far wall exploded inward. A massive Goliath prototype stomped through the breach, its armor crackling with unstable energy. At its controls sat Dr. Harris, her face contorted with manic glee. You want to see the armor's true potential? She screamed, unleashing a barrage that shredded through their defenses like paper. Let me show you. Foster watched in horror as his squad was decimated. He felt white-hot pain as shrapnel tore through his abdomen, sending him crashing to the ground. Through a haze of agony, he saw Elena rise. Her eyes met his for a brief moment, filled with sorrow and perseverance. Then she turned, sprinting towards the rampaging Goliath. Elena, no! Foster tried to shout, but his voice came out as barely a whisper. He could only watch as she reached the mech, pressing her hands against its armored shell. Energy coursed through her body as she channeled the unstable matrices, forcing them to overload. The world went white. Foster's last conscious thought was of Elena's face, serene amidst the chaos, as the explosion tore the facility apart. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.